Hello, and welcome to another episode of Speak, Film, and Enter, a podcast where we review and rank movies. I'm Nate. And I'm Adam. You know, I think we should really say film, and then we can join in. Before, How do you mean? Like, it's Speak, Film, and Enter. We're just, we're already here. That's like, true. I should say film to you, and you go, okay, that's the password. Come on in. <laughs> I, see, I see what you're saying. Some little door knock dumb thing. I feel like there's there's do. a more fun and like clever way to potentially do that. So maybe we'll have, we'll have to have a brainstorming get together. Yeah, we'll we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it. Yeah, um, there, there's definitely something. Here, there's something there though, for sure. Yeah, we can figure something. Why don't we make a sketch? Uh, but while yeah. we're here, uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, and don't forget to ding the bell on uh, YouTube so that you get notifications of when we post uh, new videos and uh, new episodes. Yeah. Also, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, because this is still available as just an audio only version. If you like to throw some while you're driving around or at work or something like that, and you don't want to look at our faces, which would be understandable, I think. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> just I'm let a, that I'm sit a, for a second. I'm a white dude in his basement with long hair and a hat on and a beard. It's, it's not going to. There's nothing really special. All right. <laughs> Perfect. That's right. really going to make people want to stick around. Just like this movie. Uh, oh, <laughs> what God. we're reviewing today is uh, we actually got the opportunity to go to a premiere of the new movie Ambulance, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Yahya Abdul-Mateen, and Isaac Gonzalez. Yeah, and because we're just lowly amateurs with a hobby, we don't get this opportunity very often. We don't have press passes. Yeah. So we finally get to release a review the day the movie comes out. Look at us go. <laughs> and it's coming out today, April 8th, for the whole world to see the new Ooh. Michael Bay movie, Ambulance. Adam, what is it about? Ambulance. Two robbers steal an ambulance after their heist goes awry. That's it. <laughs> That's the premise. It's I was definitely Bay waiting movie. for a little bit more. But yeah, at the same don't. time, there isn't more. There's not. There's not. If you've seen any of the trailers... That's it. Uh, you've seen the movie. Um, it's your classic Michael Bay uh, big explosions, or not? Not a not a billion explosions. I'm thinking the last Michael Bay movie I saw, I think, was Transformers. So it's not as explosive and as car wrecky as that is, but it's uh, it's definitely pretty pretty classic Michael Bay. I mean, it's close. A lot of cars get wrecked in this movie. That is true. That is true. Um, yeah. So I guess before we launch too far into that, we're gonna go with uh, what works. Yes, and I have a feeling, Adam, that this is going to be the shortest What Works section so far. Probably ever, at least in my opinion. <laughs> um, you think we could move on right now? I, I The only thing I'm going to say that What Works is I liked the performances by the three leads, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. Yaya Abdul-Mateen, and Isaac Gonzalez. All did a great job, um, considering they didn't have a ton to work with, and they, they were still characters like they were over the top and they're all the right times um they brought more to their characters than the script gave them yeah because the script so was I, dog shit i give them a lot of credit for that i think jake gyllenhaal does a really good job of just becoming like progressively more unhinged mm -hmm. and kind of you know the, the, like a lot of heist movies are just crime movies like really like to have that character who Feels like they're on top of things, but they've got this sort of really dark, dangerous, unpredictable unpredictability under the surface. Yeah. And Jake Gyllenhaal does a very good, like, believable job of having that, like, slowly bubbling up and then sort mm -hmm. of, like, spurting and, like, maybe, oh, no, he still got I'll it under control. Down, yeah. Ex yeah, exactly. And Yaya Abdul-Mateen, I think, does a really good job of just, like, kind of being the conflicted accomplice. Mm -hmm. and, and these are just, like, stock heist crime characters there's nothing yeah. really unique about either of those two here although i will say there was something about um the third character what is what is her name isaac gonzalez in this movie she plays um, cam cam yes yes the uh paramedic and that felt a little different than what i've seen before yeah, it was a little bit more focused on, I mean, she doesn't have time for bullshit, basically, your classic, like, I think. Her character is the same. I mean, the way like, a lot conceptually. Of men, right, women, I think, is yes. like, oh, well, she's just a badass. She's just going to focus on her career is kind of what it felt like. But right. then she gets, you know, she gets a little bit more growth uh, as the movie goes. 
Um, I meant more like I liked her character conceptually, like kind of oh, the, okay. the the situation that she was put in is something I don't think I've seen before. So I appreciated that. She's like an active, innocent bystander. Right. <laughs> Which is you know, yeah. normally it's like the, the it's like the bank manager trying to like make sure things don't go too crazy. And then like then he either dies or goes away because they leave the bank. Right. Right. And this one's like she's just there the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. I th um, We'll get more into the performances later, though. Yeah. Um, and the specifics, um, I will say there were two moments that I liked. Um, there was, I, I found there to be a very clever use of a cell phone in this movie. I, I thought mm, there was a mm -hmm. moment that was, I actually, while watching, thought like, oh, okay, this is something different. Or like, they actually used the situation they've built for themselves in a clever way here, instead of yeah. just in the most predictable way possible. And then there was one really funny moment with Yaya Abdul Mateen when he's in the back of the ambulance. Um, and yes. that was basically it. Uh, that's really all I have for what works here. I guess like the action is done well enough. Like if you're into like kind of fast cars and explosions and like everything just moving nonstop, it does that. Yeah, it it does that in spades. Uh, yeah. like the only thing that I'll say besides performances that I liked was this movie uh, heavily used drones to capture some of the footage, uh, some of the chase sequences, or just giving you a new angle of like if oh they're driving down this street now and th there's like they're downtown, so it's tighter corners and stuff. They use a drone to get through some of that stuff and film that. Um, I have a negative of that uh, in just right. a moment here, but that's I did enjoy that. Like, oh, Hollywood is learning how to use drones for cool camera shots and making it like extra good. Um, I think one of the coolest drone shots we got from like last year was uh, the vast of night. They go all the way across, like through town, oh, yeah. and through an open field and stuff. And like that was a really cool shot. I think that was a drone, um, but that was through the entire town. And I thought that was great. So yeah. seeing it getting utilized more is fun. Last uh, thing I'll say that I think worked pretty well is the uh, I think the post heist kind of when like mayhem ensues. Mm -hmm. I think that was done pretty well. I mean, I kept thinking this would have been better if Michael Mann did it and he's kind of ripping off heat. Mm. But I was entertained through that whole sequence. Yeah, because it is so chaotic. It's kind of right. it kind of makes sense to like not fully understand where the set pieces or where people are like the structure of everything or why it's going awry or whatever. It's kind of, it is chaotic to be chaotic. Right. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me, moving forward into what doesn't work. Uh, I have a long list. So if you want to start, I think we're both going to have pretty long lists. Okay. First off, we'll, we'll trade off. Yeah. I mean the, the script and dialogue, it's just really bad. I mean, there, there are a lot of lines that are just horrible. It tries to be funny not a lot, but not infrequently. Yeah. And I would say 90% of the jokes are terrible and fall flat and nobody in a fully packed theater laughed. Yeah. Um, I think the dialogue just suffered from being like your standard, like we need to get out of here. Like you got to go faster, turn right here. Like, it's like, it's all of that. And it's like, that's like not they wrote the dialogue. dialogue you want to have in a movie. Like that's the stuff it's that's going to happen anyway. Yeah, it's like they wrote the dialogue thinking every single scene could potentially be in the trailer. <laughs> so let's make sure that it's trailer ready. Yeah, it's got to have a quip. Like, got to have a exactly like quick sound bites. Yeah, like from the trailer, like the we're just the guys trying to get home. And like the what was the other line kind of at the beginning of the have I ever gotten you into something I couldn't get you out of? That's yeah, like the most cliched ever, line ever, in like movie history. And it, it's just that for most of the time and any time that there's something that sounds good it's usually just because one of the actors is just dragging this thing up yeah. into the best thing they could possibly do with it yeah i uh i the, the script is awful it doesn't do anybody any favors um there's also just like logical issues um so, so I mean, many logical issues so i don't in this movie. i don't talk about this a ton but um i i mean I did take two and a half years of screenwriting courses. So I do have some knowledge mm -hmm. of screenwriting. And I really oh only God. like to bring this up when I mention, when I notice that a movie like completely ignores something that I was taught was like vital. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, and, and mostly when I think it's easy to do, which yeah. is, you know, when we were, when I was going through these and writing a script, we went like, there was a stretch where we spent like, 
two or three weeks. Like we had multiple people peer review these and like literally the only things they were looking for in our scripts was just logical inconsistencies. Oh, like moments. Cool. Yeah, it, it really it was really, really useful. Just like moments where, you know, you're writing the script and you've got like 30 different drafts of these. Maybe you cut something you didn't remember and or you added mm -hmm. something later and you didn't explain some. Now the script doesn't explain something when There's you a hole thought somewhere. it did. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it's just for people to circle it and be like, you don't actually explain what this is, but everybody acts like we already know. So like fix that. Yeah. And there are so many moment, moments in this movie that just don't pass that test. Yeah. yeah. Like just, just moments of, I mean, this is just right away and we know what they're getting into. So I don't feel like this is a huge spoiler because it's about five minutes into the movie. Yeah. Which Yaya Abdul-Mateen shows up to visit Jake Gyllenhaal with some financial troubles. Like, can you help me out? And he's just like, oh, yeah, um, I'm leaving in five minutes to go rob a bank and get thirty two million dollars. And we need an extra guy. Like, can you help what? me out? And Yaya Abdul-Mateen's character will, by the way, um, is, is like, I needed like five hundred dollars. And he's like, well, how about thirty two <laughs> million? And he's like, dude, come it just on. felt so, I mean, it just felt so lazy. And I mean, yeah. at, so there was. That bothered me, but it was early. And then, like I said, I liked the sequence of like kind of when shit hits the fan. Mm -hmm. So I was at that point, I was just like, OK, they're not even pretending to really have a script here. Like they're they're not pretending that we're here for anything other than the action. So I yeah. was still at least open to what I was watching. Where I was just like, all right, well, they didn't put this effort in, but at least they're not pretending that they did. Yeah. But then the movie just goes on forever and ever and ever. And they have to talk more and more and more. And because of that, it just gets worse and worse and worse because they have nothing to talk about. That's interesting. And it, I mean, the length for me was a huge knock. This is two hours and 15 minutes long. You could have yeah. easily cut 30 minutes out of this movie. This could have been a tight 45 minutes in my opinion. This oh, is like, I this is a agree. short movie. It should be a short movie, except for the, I'm sure the, the inflated budget, for all the cars and stuff that are going to be in it and all the like yeah. justify its budget with, by inflating the runtime. Sweet Jesus. They're like, we um, rented all these drones. This movie needs to be over two hours. What are we going to do with it? Like <laughs> it's so there's a lot of logical ins inconsistencies early on, which like isn't always like the death uh, note for a, for a movie. They can always recover from those types of things, but they That's continue what I meant. Like, to I was happen still... in new and interesting ways throughout the movie, especially towards the end. And it's just like, I, I don't know how you got here. Like, how did I buy in that I got this far? And I'm still believing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah, just problems galore. I can probably, there. I guarantee there's going to be like a dozen that I think of once we're done recording this episode oh, that I 100%, forgot to mention. 100%. Um, yeah. It, go ahead. Honestly, we're still on uh, what doesn't work. Um, so I'm going to bring up just a few just points real fast. Um, as far as the drone footage is concerned that I talked about. Um, oh, yes. Thank I you. This is a problem for me, too. Really liked how it was shot. There was like one cool sequence where like it goes underneath a car that's like jumping over something and then right back up. So like it gains altitude in order to miss another car that's like coming directly at it. And that was probably the best shot of best use of the drone in the entire movie. But most of them are most of the shots are from up in the sky and they do like a quick flip turn to go down like the side of a building or something to just lose altitude and then get us behind the chase. All of those shots would have been really cool if they were actually like, I don't know, five seconds long or longer to like actually get us to the chase. The only shots we got, and it happened about 15 times, was we flip over, we go down the side of the building and it cuts after like a second and a half, two seconds. So like the whole shot is just the turn and the then going down. It's like, I didn't need that. The, the editing here is awful. Like at least get me to the chase at least get me to follow a cop car or follow the ambulance that we're doing like they were following behind give me more than just the, the cool flip turn oh look at look what we can do no get me there it was infuriating because it happens so often in this movie yeah the the sort of cinematography tricks that they yeah. tried like the fancy flips and stuff that they were doing with the drones like they didn't serve the story at all zero percent and the camera just never stopped moving, which I understand is like a thing with Michael Bay. But I haven't seen that many Michael Bay movies, actually, well, because the ones I have, I didn't like. Well, and even like Transformers is fine. Like, yeah, I don't remember Transformers being like this. 
No, like that had a decent storyline. Like characters are fine. Like you can say what you want about it. It's, it's transformed. Oh, I, I remember enjoying monsters, it. but like, but it's good for all intents. By all intents and purposes, the production value is high enough, and you can follow along without being like, where, what's happening? Why is the car going over here? Oh, it's, now it's suddenly over there. Like I don't understand where things are set up. Like that's this movie has that in spades. The camera never stops shaking. You can never tell what's going on. Yeah, and also for how many aerial shots we get, it's really hard to just kind of keep up with where they are it feels like they're always going toward the city somehow yeah and then somehow they're outside of the city and like oh we got to turn around and it's like how do we get here yeah it's just like if we have these this ability to give aerial shots it feels like the logistics of where they are in relative to like the cops or like where they're trying to get to should be easier for us to understand yeah otherwise if you want it to be confusing then ditch the aerial shots and leave us like in the ambulance mm -hmm. but yeah it, i mean yeah, I, I did not like the way this was shot. And I mean, really, the last thing that I want to mention here about what doesn't work, because we don't need to just shit on this movie forever. I mean, I um, right. Um, was there are some flashbacks to when they're kids oh, that are just goodness. like the most pointless. And they're clearly just there to try to, like, tug at the heartstrings. And Look, they're trying they were to brothers do, once. They're trying to have these things, these flashbacks do the heavy lifting of like all of the foundation of their relationship because they like can't write it well enough in two hours and 15 minutes to actually explain like why they care for each other or what their relationship was like. So they need to just give us these little like five second flashbacks interspersed throughout the movie of just like them smiling when they're children. Yeah. Like and there's no together. story there. If I mean, if the movie's going to be this long and you're going to have flashbacks and at least give us like 20 minutes of it or something to yeah, interspersed throughout the movie. And have like, it, like, relate to what's happening. Yeah. Like, why is there, like, if there's a divide, why is there a divide? If they came together right. through some, like, struggle, like, how did they come together? Was there like, some, why does that bind them together? Anything. Was there some event in their youth that, like, maybe should have tipped them off that they'd grow apart eventually, but they tried to ignore? Like, that might have been interesting, but something we just get shots of them, like, playing catch or sitting in a car. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say about what uh, the as far as um, the shots are concerned and the aerial shot that you were, they were mentioning is at one point in this movie for and I won't go into the reason why, but they need to slow down the police chase to for some important yeah. thing. They need to go about 20 miles an hour and the way it's shot, you can't tell if they're going 90 or 10 because it's the same look of the of the vehicle, of the ambulance as it was when they were going 90, like three seconds before it's the exact same. You can't tell that they're slowing, slowing down. If you had an aerial shot, you could see people like peel back or them. Oh, they're really just crawling past traffic. Like what is going on? Like it's innumerable, the amount of inconsistencies and terrible shots and things that happen in this movie that just don't make any sense. Um, All right. So yeah, we're moving on. <laughs> Moving on, performances is where we're going to head to next. Yeah, um, I mean, we touched we, a little bit on this, but we touched on this at the beginning because this is like really the only kind of consistent positive in mm -hmm. this movie is that Jake Gyllenhaal is Jake Gyllenhaal. He always gives it 100 percent and he nails it here. Um, Yaya Abdul-Mateen, they actually I think they had pretty good chemistry. They worked off of each other really well. And then agree. Isa Gonzalez, I think for the most part, I, I think... Hers is interesting because the script is attempting to give her character more depth yeah. and like levels than it is with anybody else. But because the script sucks, that makes it almost harder for her. Yeah. Even like that's, it's almost the reverse angle normally where it's just like, oh, the script didn't really give them anything to do. But with Jake Gyllenhaal and Yaya Abdul-Mateen, the script didn't give their characters a lot of depth. So I felt like they had an easier job of like breaking or like, rising above the script yeah being like the big bad or the big uh boastful or loud or whatever whatever or attribute conflicted you want to or whatever it is yeah. yeah whatever attribute you want to uh attribute to those people they're able to just like latch onto that and take it to a thousand whereas she has right. to be slightly more nuanced and this isn't the vehicle to do that right right unintended yeah um <laughs> god this movie I, I think every other shot was them turning left or right very very hard on an, in an ambulance it's like they're Naturally. very top heavy they'll they'll i don't know oh. oh um 
No, but performances, I thought she did a good job. I, I like her. She was just in um I care a lot from last year, not a bunch, but she's the Oh, okay. She's the like girlfriend of um Oh, that's the right. Character. Rosamund Pike. Uh, yes, thank you. We um, were very uh we had very different opinions on that movie. Yeah, I hated that movie. Not I for really her, liked though. it. Yeah. Um but she was in that and I thought she did just about uh, she had about the same Im- amount of importance in each movie. Uh sure and just i want to see her do i don't know even if it's like a dramatic role i want to see her just do something else that's good that's uh, that i'm gonna like because i hate it i care a lot and i hated this and it's like i want you to be in a movie that i like so i can be like yes look at you are good i think you're good i really like you but be in something good um that's fair jake jalen hall was jake jalen hall and he was a badass and cool and yeah abdul mateen the only thing i think i've seen him in recently was the matrix which i also hated which was like damn it guys like (laughs) i think he played bobby seal in um trial of chicago seven oh yes yes he was he was in that also he was in um i think he was in us and then um i believe he was also in um the hbo series watchmen just that one oh i haven't gotten to that yet which i've seen and i had mixed feelings on, but he is very good in that show. Okay. If you if you wanted to check out something else that he's in that is actually like well acclaimed, I do need to get down. I do need to get into that. Um, into that that show. I haven't. It's I only think eight I watched episodes. The first, yeah, I watched the first episode and then didn't just yeah. pick it back up. But um, that's something that I did start. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll look out for him in other spots. I yeah, he was in Trial of Chicago Seven. He was good in that. I know he's, he's just talented. Man from last year too, which I haven't mm. seen. Yeah, I I enjoyed him being the conflicted like I don't want to go too far into storylines and stuff, but the conflicted yeah. guy uh, in this and actually having like, oh, here's the moments where I'm going to be or I'm going to break my moral code or here's the moments where I'm s- super hard, of course, sticking to my moral code. So I liked that that balance happened. I thought he did a good job with those. Yeah. Want to get right. into uh, the last Spot Who is this here? for? Yeah. Who is this for? I mean, it's not for us, clearly, if you haven't been listening. But the um, general American public will love this movie. If this had come out on July 4th, this would be the Blue Lives Matter boner that America needs at that time of the year. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. This is just it's nonstop action, but not good action. Uh it's nonstop camera shaking. It's nonstop, like the stakes are always so high. Um it's it's gonna leave you like edge of your seat, like oh my god, that was crazy. Like my heart's pounding. It's the generic movie that like every American's like, I want a summer like action movie. This this is it, right? I mean, it, yeah. If if you're somebody who likes to go see the big budget blockbusters in theaters, mm-hmm. you're probably gonna like this. Um, I mean, it's definitely geared towards the popcorn, turn off your brain, yep. watch things explode in front of you for two plus hours, and you'll be fine. Um, I think where Adam and I struggled a little bit is, uh, at least myself, I personally do not care about large action set pieces <laughs> for the most part. Um, the things that this movie is bad at are the things that I care the most about. Yeah. So it's just, it, it's very much not for me. Um, but, you know, we were seeing a premiere. Why not? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not upset that I saw it or anything like that, but no. uh, definitely not up my alley. But yeah, li- like we said, if if you're somebody who just wants a big action movie on a big screen with movie stars, this is exactly what that is. Yeah. And and you will, I mean, you will find something to enjoy in this. Like I said, I did, it's not, it's not good in my opinion and it's not something I'll, I want to rewatch, but I did find things that I liked. We talked about it at the top of the show. I did find things that I laughed at. Um, it's just, if you want to care about the storyline or like, Ooh, how is this set? The, how is this heist going to go? Why is it going to be cool or whatever? What's going to be interesting? It does. It skips over some of that. So it's just the big, like bombastic car crashes yeah. and that sort of stuff. So I will um, say this really strikes me as the type of movie that, will get a lot of play on TV Mm -hmm. and you can just turn it on halfway through and just pick it up wherever. Because I mean, like you heard with the concept, like the concept here is as simple as possible. They steal an ambulance. They're running from the police or fleeing from the police in an ambulance and they just drive for like 90 minutes and you can just pick that up basically whenever. Yeah. It's a TNT movie or an FX, FXX movie in six years, two years, whatever you want. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so we'll be right back with our star ratings. <laughs> All right. Um, so star ratings for uh, for Ambulance. Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? I want you to go first because I'm still kind of waffling back and forth between two numbers. Okay. Um, well, I, like I said, I hated this movie. I gave this, as I, as I type it in right now, I gave this one star. Uh, this okay. is horrible. Um, writing is bad. Uh, acting is fine. Uh, script is bad. Set pieces are bad. Action is bad. Uh, the set or the the sets of knowing where things are in a given sequence are bad. The drone shots are fun but bad. Um, <laughs> this this it's like Jake Gyllenhaal's character is like uh, Robert Pattinson's character from Good Time, but like amped up to a thousand. Just like always has like oh well there I got myself in this new situation. Uh, I can do this to figure it out and get out of it. And and it's that over and over and over and over again. Um, it's there's so many like American flag stickers on all of the cop cars. And they at one point they introduced like this new badass like truck of a cop car that and like a fleet of like Dodge Chargers behind it that are all like decked out as like police vehicles. And that's where I get the this is a Blue Lives Matter movie. One hundred percent. This is straight up like cops are important. Look at all look at all the cool shit they have. Like it's so fun to be a cop and like chase these bad guys because they're clearly the bad guys. Um it does nothing for me as a person who really likes dumb action movies. You can turn your brain off to. I like a little bit more story than this. This has 0% redeemable qualities besides the actors that are in it do a decent job and the drones like Hollywood's figuring out how to use drones. I absolutely hated this and I will never watch it again. I don't recommend seeing it. All right. <laughs> um, I, I like this a little more than you, or I should say I did not dislike this quite as much as you. Um, okay. I think the more we talk about it though, I I've got to just give it a one and a half. Um, okay. it, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really bad, but it does have Jake Gyllenhaal in it. <laughs> so yeah. That kind of like, you know, brings it up from a one to a one and a half for me. Um, and I mean, I can already hear some people's arguments of what I usually get when I don't like an action movie is I'll get accused of being pretentious, which is not necessarily untrue in, in, <laughs> some, in some respects. I think if you have a movie podcast, any of us, Dylan, myself, and, and you, if you have a right. movie podcast and somebody goes, you're being a little bit pretentious, you're like, I absolutely am. I'm talking right. about movies I mean, I on can, the internet. I can, under, I yeah. can understand that about myself. Yeah. But the most important point that I will make to counter that is the, the argument is usually don't care about these things that we all know are bad. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be dumb and fun. Yeah. And exciting. Well, that may very well be, but I don't find big car chases for the sake of big car chases fun. So that might be fun for you. And I will, I do not care if people love this movie. Honestly, it's a new original movie. I hope it does really well in the movie theater. That's because true. That's, movie theaters it need it. And it's not a franchise. And like this, Lost City, Dog. 100%. Like, these are movies that I like. I really hope people go see this. I hope they enjoy them. It's not for me. I don't find this stuff fun. I can sometimes. It did attempt to be funny. For me, really, like I, I really like action comedies. I don't like action for the sake of action, for the most part. Um, there, I can't remember very many movies that I've watched where I thought like the action was amazing and that like really elevated it for me. But I've seen movies that I really like where I like the story and the characters and then there happens to be good action. And then I've enjoyed mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, just really not for me. This is not my cup of tea anyway. I'm, that might be why I'm like half a star above you is because there are elements of this that you should like more than me. Yeah. Whereas I kind of went in thinking like, this is not my thing at all. And I'm expecting that I'm not going to like this. Well, and that's the thing. Cause like, I knew that we were walking into a Michael Bay movie. I knew what this was right. going to be like walking in. I knew it was probably going to be bad. And, but that it was just, it was so bad that it made me just go, right. really? You can't even make something decent, Michael Bay. Like you can't, you can't even like capture what, like how good like Transformers was. I know I keep bringing that up, but like that was the last <laughs> movie I saw of his that like, I was genuinely like, oh, that was Honestly, cool. I like this might, action and there was other stuff. That might be peak Michael Bay. 
It, ha- it, it might be. Like, I've only seen three Michael Bay movies, I think. This, Transformers, and Pearl Harbor. So for me, Transformers is peak Michael Bay. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. And, and, and Pearl Harbor is not bad, but it's... And, and, it's not and good. It's a, it's a love story first, which is the wrong idea there. Which is but super weird. Very dumb. But yeah, uh, this was like if you wanted to remake Speed, but you wanted it to suck and not have any cool story moments. That's what this movie was, because it's just like we're just still driving at like 60 Speed miles definitely an hour. came into my head a few times while watching the movie. Yeah. And it was just. It's just it's just disappointing. Like Michael Bay, you're you're clearly you've made a bunch of movies. They made a billions of dollars, you know, over the course of his career. Like, you know what you're doing. You can make good movies. He just chooses not to. Yeah, it it does feel like he tried to kind of merge speed and heat. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. And just couldn't really pull it off. This also feels like maybe this is one of the movies where that the studio was like, well, we'll give you this one if you do this one. And he's like, fine, fuck it. Maybe. Like, I mean, because this was written by uh, somebody who I think has written like pre- predominantly like television. Um, and I, he maybe just got like attached to this movie or just was like offered a bunch of money to to do it and said, screw it. It's like right up my alley. I, I do this better than anybody else. I'll, I'll take a shot at it. But I don't know. I, I knew walking in it wasn't going to be great. And I was still disappointed. Well, there you have it. <laughs> a one, a one and a half from adam and nate at speak film and enter we'll have to get dylan to watch this and see what he thinks maybe that's yeah. uh maybe that's uh, next see, roundup or something like that i can see dylan telling me to let my hair down yeah you think so i don't i doubt it but i could i could see it i don't think he's gonna like this but yeah i, I mean we'll, we'll leave him we'll leave him that wiggle room right yeah yeah all right uh well i think uh whose turn is it to put a wrap on the show that would be yours Oh, let me find my quote. <laughs> I was going to say, right. you told me you had it. <laughs> yeah. You're crazy. You're fucking crazy. No. Poor people are crazy, Jack. And I'm eccentric. <laughs>